Hi, Booktube. Um, before I begin this review, I just need to say that um, a, a, a tragedy has befallen Booktube. And for those of you who've interacted with me the longest, you'll probably know what that is. Um, and out of respect, out of deep respect, I'll say no more, except to uh, say that um, give your loved ones a hug. That's all I will say. Nevertheless, I am going to soldier on with this review because the book is fresh off my mind as I finished it early this morning. As of early this morning, as of the recording of this video. This video might be uploaded uh, a few hours later. So I'm going to review The Matari's Countdown by Robert Ludlum. This is my fifth Robert Ludlum novel that I have uh, read, and I believe it is my third, yes, my third that I've reviewed on this channel. And to be honest with you, um, I think it's time I take a break from reading Robert Ludlum. That, I mean, it's so formulaic. That's not to say it's a bad, badly written, it's just that it's becomes increasingly predictable. Uh, there's so many repeat themes in this book from his other novels. It's been that, uh, what's the correct term? frankenstein out of? <laughs> it just takes bits and pieces of previous books and put them in, put them in uh, this plot. Nevertheless, um, I did read through it. Um, I would say this is a middle of the road, um, not one of the better Robert Ludlum novels I've read, but uh, it's not the worst. It's not the worst. I, I, I didn't like, I wasn't a huge fan of Trevane and the Apocalypse Watch, um, but I am a fan, I was a fan of uh, the Bancroft Strategy and uh, the Scarlatti Inheritance. So this one is like in between. I'm going to rate it 7 out of 10. That's not to say I didn't enjoy reading it. It was fine. It was okay. Um, and it had like bits and pieces of fan service for me. Stuff that doesn't matter in the quality of a book, but the fact that they put it in there amused me. Uh, so what's this book about? Uh, I, again, like with the book The Friends of Harry Perkins, I'm guilty of reading a sequel before reading the original. This is a sequel to the Matari's Circle, published in the late 1970s. This one was published in 1997. So it's a sequel. You might ask, why are you reading a sequel? Because from the time he published The Matari's Circle to the time this book was published is many years and for the most part most Robert Ludlum books stand alone on their own merit um, so I felt and I and on top of that I have no plans on reading the Matari circle there's only one other Robert Ludlum novel that I plan on reading in the future um, but I'm gonna take a break from Robert Ludlum for a while so it's a sequel to the Matari circle and that's and the fact that it is a sequel is one of the reasons why I picked up this book, because most evil organizations can be taken down in Robert Ludlum's world anyway, taken down once and that's it. This this evil organization rose up out of the ashes, and one of the heroes of the previous novel has to come back in the fight and do it all over again. So, what? Uh, so it is the uh, the Mataris, who are an old, uh, shall we say, so they, they had a similar scheme in the late 70s in the Matari circle, and now they're back in the mid to late 90s. Well, what is this evil organization called the Mataris? It is a group of oligarchs, mostly old money, people who inherited their wealth. And they're descended of, uh, 
European royalty as well. They're descended of uh, nobility. They're descended of people who earned their wealth. So they are mostly old money. That's not to say they cannot be new money because they know how to amass vast amounts of wealth. Now, this group of oligarchs uh, based in uh, Corsica and uh, northern Italy, um, in the previous book they were based in the United States. This plan is a little bit convoluted. It's a little bit difficult to uh, explain. Uh, so they intend on building vast monopolies. They buy out several companies. They make uh, most of the Western world, um, the majority of the economies of the Western world, dependent on their on their goods and services. So they buy out all. Uh, they buy out um, a lot of. Uh, they do a lot of mergers. So they're amassing the companies. They're creating trusts. They're creating monopolies. And when they do that, and afterwards, their plan is to dismantle, temporarily break up these, these uh, take down these companies, let their stock fail or whatever, which causes economic chaos, and then they can rebuild, and then governments will turn to them for their vast amounts of wealth to rebuild various economies, because they press the detonate button. They spilled the milk. So it's kind of weird. It, it was hard for me to comprehend these economics. And there are scenes of various uh, meetings, board meetings in this, similar to uh, Trevain, similar to the book Trevain, that I, that were just <laughs> bored me to tears. But the heroes, uh, Brandon, what's his name? Brandon Schofield, the original hero from the 1979 novel, or 1978, 1979, uh, from the Machiri Circle, comes back. And he buddies up with a younger agent. Now, these are government... Now, government agents around the world, intelligence agencies, law enforcement agencies, and the military, uh, all are working it together to bring down this, uh, this secret oligarchy that want to, wants to destroy the world economy so they can create a global monopoly. They're capitalists, but they want to eliminate competition with this dastardly scheme. <laughs> anyway, so military, law enforcement, and intelligence agents are all working together to bring them down. And the main heroes are Cameron Price, uh, the new agent, the younger agent, and Brandon Schofield, the older agent, who is brought out of retirement to once again bring down the bad guys. And they are helped, they, are, they work as a team with several other side characters. So it's interesting, it's not James Bond single-handedly taking down the evil, vi the villain's lair, <laughs> taking down the villain's plot. It's, it's a group of heroes. And the, vil and the main villains uh, is a group of them, but, it's a, uh, but the leaders of the, of the Mataris are two people. Well, one's a leader, the other one's more of a senior advisor. They, um, they also work as a tag team. They work together to uh, um, ha uh, make this evil plot come to fruition. Um, there is a, so I kind of like that teamwork. It's not just single personality, one person versus another. It's teamwork. So that's, it's not, I don't want to say it's different, but it feels more like a coordinated effort. A group of heroes makes more sense than a single hero, if that makes sense as well. What amused me about the main villain is, one of the two main villains, is he's a Dutchman. And I'm half Dutch myself. <laughs> and, uh, and the other guy, I don't remember his, uh, I don't remember where he's from. He's from some European country, but I don't, but he doesn't say in this book. Maybe it says so in the, in the previous book. 
Anyway, um, there's uh, there's a lot of uh, macho talk here. People saying things like, get his ass down here. What do you mean by that? And it's as if, uh, as, as if everyone's just exaggerated dialogue. It's, it's, it's weird. It's weird. Uh, I don't know how, to ex how else to explain it. Um, and there's also a, birds at, uh, a bird attack in this book, which is interesting because I'm a bird watcher. That also amused me. So this book, I don't want to say it gained points. Well, maybe it did uh, from a 6 to a 7. <laughs> by amusing me with certain plot elements that are not that don't count in building the quality of the book, but in giving me fan service. So it did put a smile on my face. And nevertheless, these, these oligarchs are in it for pure power. They're not ideologically driven, like the villains from the Bancroft strategy. So I was a... Uh, I was a little bit less invested. There is a little bit of an ideology. They say that the chaos of the stock market, we need, a, we need a world monopoly so that we're in full control. They're not talking about workers' rights and socialism. They're not, uh, they're not talking about healthy competition in a society with economic growth. No, they just want pure power and they just want pure wealth. And they think if they have all the economic power, they can make the world a better place. It's partially ideologically driven, but mostly it's just for pure profit and power. So they want to control the world economies, and when they control the world economies, they can uh, influence who gets, how, the gov how governments in various countries are formed. So various police states, I would say. Um, so yeah, this is one of the more so the villain is the villain's nefarious plot is sort of abstract, well not abstract but um, sort of uh, uninspiring. Um, it doesn't grip me like what their plan and what their motives are. It didn't uh, get me that excited. But there were some scenes in here which amused me, and the buddy cop interaction between young cop, old cop. Uh, so the older uh, guy Brandon Schofield coming out of retirement and Cameron Price the younger agent they use their skills um, so the older so the older gentleman uses his um, has his skill in uh, manipulating people and knowing the people's ways of thinking and he and he has a lot of inside information as to how the Mataris operated because he infiltrated them in the previous book and he does it again in this book he goes undercover and pretends to be one of them while the other one is a little bit more uh, familiar with 90s era technology which he's not so familiar with like computers and things uh, although this was published in 1997 so we've gone a long way we've moved on a long way uh, anyway um, would I recommend this book? Yeah, it's fine. It's uh, it's middle of the road. It's good passing the time, but if you want something truly thought provoking, nah, nah. I enjoyed it. So uh, that's the end of my review. Uh, if you made it this far, I just want to say that I probably won't upload as many videos as I used to. Um, for, for obvious and not so obvious reasons. Uh, but I, I still want to participate in, uh, in, in, uh, in a reading event that happens in uh, August. I don't want to name drop too many things in the description because this, this vid review has already enough book titles as it is. Anyway, uh, that's all for now. Like I said in the beginning of the video, Give your loved ones a hug. Goodbye.